Have you ever spent $35,000 for a 600 year old tree and had to throw away 60% of it after you cut it down? Hey, I'm John Pike, Big Sky Steerman. Uh, what I want to talk to you today is about our high-grade Sitka spruce. We bought our own spruce tree out of southeast Alaska, had it milled and dried. Sitka spruce has long been recognized as the standard for aircraft wood wings. Uh, we have gotten our Sitka spruce out of uh, southeast Alaska, which has the last remaining large uh, stands of this ancient wood. Uh, what I have here uh, is some examples of the recent wood that we have uh, gotten out of a tree in Alaska. And uh, it's a very beautiful clear wood uh, favored by the Japanese, so consequently hard to come by and people are recognizing that. There's a chart in the advisory circular AC 4313-1B which illustrates the different kinds of woods that are allowed for aircraft use. We have Sitka spruce, the standard. We have Douglas fir. We have noble fir, western hemlock, pine, white cedar, poplar. But the problem with most of those woods are they don't have the strength that Sitka spruce has other than Douglas fir. And so consequently, the dimensions uh, would have to be increased in order to qualify strength-wise uh, to use those as aircraft spar wood. A Douglas fir, which we use often also, is stronger than Sitka spruce, but it's a little heavier, maybe 10 to 15 percent heavier. We can use Douglas fir, and we often do if we have to. The other uh, grading criteria is um, the mill spec, the military specification that for years the wood has been graded to. The challenges on finding a good quality aircraft grade Sitka spruce are pretty large. Uh, we often say, well, the board has to be perfect. Well, uh, the grading criteria does allow for some blemishes and uh, here we have uh, Mill S 6073 aircraft spruce and it also defines the various uh, blemishes, you might call them, and problems that you might find in wood that we could determine to be acceptable or unacceptable. So we have uh, the mill spec. Then also there's a, a text that's not published anymore, but it's called ANC-18 Bulletin Design of Wood Aircraft Structures. So there are sources that help us in grading this beautiful clear wood that you see here. We, uh, the problem is as we develop the wood, uh, defects reveal themselves and then it becomes a problem. Here's an example of a pitch pocket with associated uh, lines, um, coloration lines, which don't lend itself to spar a construction. So we've had to reject this board. This board here is beautiful uh, wood that has no grain deviation. The annular rings are standing vertically on the flat face of the board. But look at this big old swirl and this uh, grain which didn't plane well. Uh, got a big problem there. Uh, we've got kind of a pitch pocket over here. We are allowed one inch, one inch and an eighth in length in one eighth inch deep. That's a blemish that's allowable. The primary concern with wood is that it's a good straight grain. Um, there, there's a limit on the grain variation. And speaking of grain, we have the annular rings indicating the age of the tree. And this one here, uh, the annular rings are laying a little bit too much of a cross angle. They're not vertical on the board. And so it's produced a flat grain texture. The board is sound and uh, under some testing arrangements, it would be considered an airworthy board but um, normally the grain cannot slope more than 45 degrees uh, down the board. And we want a minimum of eight, six to eight grains, uh, annular ring grains per inch. Other factors are uh, uh, discoloration associated with uh, its location relative to the, the bark. 
uh, we have some variation here in color. Um, that's not uh, a problem so much. It's an aesthetic problem, perhaps. Uh, other problems are big splits or cracks when the tree fell. A lot of times they're damaged. Here's a big split right here that enters into this big board. This is a nice, big, wide, beautiful board. We can use this board if we cut that uh, split out of the board. One of the frustrations is that we'll have it all planed down to a dimension, and then lo and behold, a pitch pocket will show up. And uh, you have this big, beautiful board, and there's, then there's a, a little one inch knot or uh, something that uh, leaves the board questionable, and then you're all frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're in the process of dimensioning now some beautiful boards. We've uh, planed these boards down for inspection, and we've determined that they are candidates for aircraft spars. Uh, well, so there, this is, for instance, is a big old defect here, but uh, we were able to put that on a portion of the board, which will be cut off. So for the most part now, these boards uh, are ready for one straight edge. We have a carriage here that the board is clamped to and it's run through the table saw to give one straight edge. Then the, uh, the board goes to our drill fixture, which, uh, which punches the holes, drills the holes into the spar. And um, we can do two at a time. So now we have here the two beautiful Sitka spruce spar boards that are a little oversized in thickness and width, but uh, they're ready for final dimensioning. And then they will have their mahogany plates put on them, uh, rib location lines drawn on them, and the other little details necessary to send them out in a big sky steerman wood wing kit. All right, here's the finished spars, beautifully dimensioned, plywood reinforcing plates are glued into position, spars are on their rib marks, and uh, is now ready for application installation of the overhauled internal metal work, the compression members, bolts, nuts, fittings, etc. This kit comes to you just uh, ready for you to assemble and I've always been a model airplane guy, so to me, it's just a 100% scale model airplane.